everybody and welcome to another exciting episode of Why Don't You Want My Stuff. Today's episode I'm going to call the Head Cold Edition. I have a head cold and everyone in the family is sick and I might have uh, my inexpensive props blow away. But today is all about sports collectibles. For those of you that know me know I am a psychotic Washington Nationals fan. Um, very, you know, I'm seeing a lot of people jump on the bandwagon. It's awesome. We're going to the World Series first time ever. Um, I, I think they say since 1933, since the city went to the World Series. However, the Montreal Expos, which is where I started uh, about 1981 in Little League, the first team I was ever on was called the Expos. So I became a Montreal Expos fan, even though I lived uh, not far from the Phillies. But I was a Montreal Expos fan my whole life. They sold the franchise, they moved to Washington, D.C., and I have been a diehard Nats fan. I am loyal to a fault. I love this team, uh, the tenacity they showed, and the comeback is just amazing. Um, my wife hopes they win the World Series so I can take a little break from watching games. I literally, I think if I missed one game on TV, I'd be shocked. And it probably was streaming on my phone. Anyway, I want to talk today about sports collectibles. See, the Montreal Expo? Sports collectibles. Um, it's a really, really hot collectible market, but the prices are not what you think. And that's what I want to talk about. There's a lot of psychology with sports collectibles. There's a lot of misinformation out there, rarity and grading and all sorts of things like that. People ask, why are sports collectibles worth money? Uh, and of course they know the guy who has a man cave or somebody that like is a diehard fan and they'll buy, they want to have Mickey Mantle's jersey and they want to have, there's so much concern in today's market with it with fraud, with uh, forgeries and that kind of thing because it was such a lucrative market. But the 90s and making everything collectible, everything was a collectible, it came out. And my rule is if it says a collectible on the package, it's not going to be a collectible because they made way too many of them and that was the whole racket. However, why are the old sports memorabilia worth money? Why Mickey Mantle signatures and those kind of things? They had value because they weren't made to be collectible. People were just true fans and they were getting a souvenir at the game. So they're extremely hard to find, they're rare, and those, it, when proven, you know, can be, have some significant value. Your Ty Cobb, Babe Ruth, they just didn't know that this was going to be the thing. These collectibles would become a rare hot commodity. Therefore, that's why you start to see the forgeries and that kind of things in there. So today, people have, you know, they want JSA or PSA to have certified everything. By the way, there's a Penelope Johnson sighting in the background. That is the Calico Mistress of the Dark. She's right back there. Anyway, so back to sports collectibles. I just want you to know do your homework. There's so much stuff on eBay. There's so much stuff out there that the it's ripe with, you know, with fraud. Uh, I, I can't tell you how many. I've seen like one real Babe Ruth signature baseball in my life personally, but I've had about 15 fakes come through. So it just, it, it's more common than not. Also, I just look out for some of the rare pieces. Penelope's really putting on a show back there. The uh, rare pieces would be things like Roberto Clemente, um, Thurman Munson. The reason these players are worth money is because they died early. Sad to say, it's kind of like artists that die early. And it's because they didn't sign a lot. You, you know, your players like Mickey Mantle and Ted Williams, they just kept signing even in retirement. So that becomes important. You want to know when was this ball assigned. A ball, game signed ball from the period when they actually played is obviously worth more money than when they were down in Florida signing autographs for, for money, which you know we totally get. And hey, if you're a diehard sports fan like I am, you don't really care. You'll just take, take something like that. Unfortunately, I've sold most of my collection. Uh, for those of you that know, uh, the family uh, had a financial business setback recently, and that's why I have time to sit in the backyard and tell you these things. It's also why it would be uh, just um, poetic that the Washington Nationals win the World Series for me this year, just to uh, just you know make this year a little brighter. Although it can't be brighter than having the baby girl just turn one. Lila just turned one this weekend, so really excited about that. 
Thanks again for watching. I have a lot more coming up. Uh, I promise my production will get better as I make a dollar or two, um, and I'm looking for celebrity endorsements. So, uh, Gene Simmons, I've, I've bought, you know, everything Kiss since I was a child. You owe me. Uh, Paul Stanley, I've defended you, you know. So, let's do it.